Hello! Today I'd like to show you how to make a simple flanged cushion. Now I've made a couple here in a little set with cars on because I thought a little boy would think these were just wonderful as a little gift on his bed or in his bedroom. Um, often we make cushions and things for girls but I know that boys like them too. And But of course you don't have to use novelty fabrics, you could use any fabric you like. And my understanding is that this little strip around the edge, this flat area that I've created, is the flange. Flange is used, it's such a wonderful word isn't it, flange? It seems to be used in all sorts of different things. Um, I do a flange on a binding which is way different to this. I do this flanged cushion. Apparently in engineering and building they use flanges in pipes and who knows what else. Anyway, so we're going with a flange today and uh, I'll show you quickly how we make one of these. Now I've chosen today to show you in some of these delicious linen fabrics that I'm going to uh, make one of the cushions so that you can see how I go about it. And uh, I can actually show you I've made a couple already. It is a particularly delicious linen fabric because it has food type things, recipes and bits all over it. Um, how could I resist? So I'm going to get on with showing you how to do that. I'll just pop these out of the way. and we'll get going. So what I've got is a square for my centre um, of, of my cushion and I'm going to pop a strip whoops, don't need the batting, you need, I'm going to use a piece of batting in there as well and this is my backing but, uh, so I've just cut a square, it's a 9.5 inch square and I'm going to pop my 1.5 inch cut strips either side and then the top and bottom. So I'll just quickly do that um, so that you can see from start to finish how I make one of these. I find these cushions are a great little decor item. You can of course make a much more serious one and do all sorts of different things on it, but I just love the different fabrics. So just using my quarter inch seam and popping the sides on. Nothing particularly hard about this. Um, you could, if you were making something that was like a nice piece or applique and block, you could do this sort of thing into a cushion. But today I'm just using the delicious fabrics. So I've put my two sides on. I'm quickly going to press those. Now I'm going to press the seams into the border. I think that's the best place for them. And on this side. So these linen fabrics that are around these days are, are very, very nice. They're slightly heavier than their normal quilting cottons, um, but they sew up beautifully. So don't be afraid to try some different fabrics. Now I'm going to pop the top and the bottom on my block. So again with the quarter inch seam now I've cut my strips long enough to go right the way across this time. So the first two were the same length as the square is and now they're just longer to, to cope with the strips that you've already sewn on. So I've actually cut them 11 and a half inches by one and a half. So that's the top. Quickly pop the bottom on. Now I'm going to press those, again pressing the seam into that strip that you've just added, the border. You could make this strip wider of course, I've just chosen to make a narrow flange on these cushions. Um, it can be any size you like, the square in the middle can be any size you like. Um, while I'm there I might actually just quickly iron that onto the batting. Now I've got a fusible batting here, it's a cotton poly, it's the hogs batting and I'm going to just iron 
my square, which I've, I've cut the batting the same size as the square, which will be 11 and a half inches square at this stage. And I'm just going to iron that onto there so that it hangs together. So that's all ready now with the batting iron to it. Now I'm not going to put anything on the back. You can put another piece of fabric on the back of that because that's going to be the inside of your cushion. But because these are more of a decorator item than a really useful item, I don't feel the need to put anything on the back. And also if you were going to be doing some quilting, if this was a piece or applique block or you wanted to do some um, fancy work in the way of quilting and things on there, now would be the time to do that. Um, but I'm not doing any of those things. I'm doing the simple today. Um, so now I'm going to, to make my backing. Now it's just an envelope type style back so that we've got a piece that overlaps and another piece that's under, underlapping I guess um, over, over there. So you, you kind of want it to overlap you, you, about, so you want it, sorry, each piece to be about two-thirds of the full distance of the cushion um, so that there's a good overlap. If you don't have enough overlap it can kind of burst out which isn't particularly attractive. So I've already cut my backing pieces. I've cut them the same width, which is 11 and a half inches, and I've cut them, just check that, um, about nine and a half inches in the other direction. And so now what we need to do is just fold two of the longer edges ready to hem them. So I usually, in my cutting, I've allowed to fold over um, approximately half an inch, no more than half an inch, slightly less if you like, um, and do a double fold. So you fold it over once and pressed it, and now we'll just fold the second time and press it. And then we're just going to stitch along there with a straight stitch to hold that in place. And I'll just quickly press the second one. So you can see this cushion is coming together very quickly. These make great gifts. Um, I have a young friend who particularly likes horses, so I made her one year for her birthday, a little set of three cushions with horse fabrics. So you can choose fabrics that are particular to somebody's interest, if it's for a gift or particular to a decor, all sorts of things. So now I'm just going to stitch along close to the folded edge, just with a straight stitch all the way along. So I've got two ready. I'll pop the other one through while I'm here. And snip them apart, snip my threads off, and now I've got my backs ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay them right sides together so that I can stitch around the outside edge. So I'm going to lay the top piece on first. So my hem is turned up, so we want right sides together, and I'm going to line up the top edge. And my hemmed edge is going to be approximately two thirds of the way down. It may be slightly more, it shouldn't really be any less. And then I'm going to lay this one, the bottom one on top. So just make sure that you've got your fabric, if this is a one-way fabric, up the right way. You're starting with the top, then you're bringing up the bottom one. And that's so that when it's turned out the right way, your top um, cover comes down over on the outside. Otherwise it's going to kind of be upside down and not be so cooperative. So we've done that. Now if you wanted to, you could pop a couple of pins in to hold those in place because you don't want that all to move. You don't need a lot of pins, just perhaps one either side through the, the double thickness, so you have got a couple of thicknesses here, um, but that's okay. And now we're going to just come around the outside edge just with our quarter inch seam allowance again. Now I've got the batting underneath, I've never had any trouble sewing with the batting underneath. If it's not cooperating, you might want to turn it over and have the batting on top. So it doesn't really matter where you start, I'm just going to sew all the way around with my quarter inch seam allowance. Let's pivot at the 
corner. So you can see this is pretty quick and easy. I love cushions. I think they're a great little decorating item. They're quick and easy to make. They're usually washable if anything happens. And if you're decorating a bedroom, you just often want a little quick cushion. And this can be so much fun. And there's so many delicious fabrics. I don't have a cat, but I'm sure the cat would like a cushion. Especially with a flange around it. Okay, so now I've got back to where I started. Take that out, snip my threads off. I just overlapped my stitching a little bit there. Now we're going to turn this out the right side, the right way out, but first of all we're just going to snip the corners. So close to your stitching, but not through your stitching. Just snip diagonally across each corner. This will just help the corners to sit out as nicely as possible. It's never an easy thing when they've got batting in them, um, but this helps it to sit nicely at the corners. So now I'm going to turn that out the right way. So I find that my fingers in the corner is often the easiest answer, but you may find you've got a tool that will help you and you can just poke that corner out. And go around with all four corners, make, paying particular attention to these little corners because very shortly you won't have access to them, so you need to get this bit sorted now. So, if they won't come out um, just with your finger, you as I said, you may have a tool, perhaps a little um, pencil or some scissors, not too sharp a scissor point because you'll just poke a hole through it, um, but just have them so that. They come out quite pleasing to your eye. Okay, so now I've got my cushion out the right way and I'm going to take it to the eye now and press it. So I'm just going to make sure everything's sitting nice and flat. Make sure that my seams around the edge are sitting nicely because I'm going to press all those and I don't want them sitting all funny and I don't want them sitting so that they turn to the front or any of those sorts of things. So it's just a matter of smoothing it out and making sure everything is sitting nicely and then pressing those edges. So I'll just grab the iron and I can have a quick look at the front, make sure that's all looking good. I, for some reason, prefer to press from the back. I can see my seam there and I can just press all the way along there. And just take it round and do one side at a time, just making sure that that edge is just sitting nice and straight. And we're doing well, it's looking good. And <clears throat> okay, on the last side now. So now we've got that all sitting nicely, nice and flat. What we're now going to do is come around and stitch in the ditch. I rarely stitch in the ditch, but we actually want to be stitching along that seam line now. So we'll just stitch in what they call the ditch, which is the seam line area. So we'll just stitch right up close to the, to the outside border strip on the sewing machine. So I'll just go and do that. Just, just a straight stitch right up close in the ditch there, so you shouldn't see this. If your thread is, is wildly different, you may want to change it to a matching thread so it doesn't show. If you've got a needle down, it always helps the pivoting in the corners. So we're going all the way around. So 
So your actual stitching should be on your centre fabric but right up close to the outside one. Now when you're coming up this side just remember you've got a little um, your backing is there and there's, so there's a little piece there. Just make sure that that's not going to um, catch underneath. Make sure it's all sitting nicely as you get to it. stitch, reverse stitch, just to hold my threads and I'm just going to trim them off close now and on the back as well. So that's my cushion cover. Done! Already! It's all finished. How good is that? We've got the little pocket in the back where you can pop your insert and I'll quickly show you. I usually make the inserts for these sorts of cushions because they, they're not particularly easy to buy them. So I've I've got one here just about finished so I can show you what I've done. I've simply cut a square either the same size as your centre square or maybe just half an inch bigger um, and I've stitched around it already quarter of an inch in and I've snipped my corners but I've left a gap for turning um, and so I'll just turn that out the right way and I'll pop those corners out just the same as we did on that but I won't do all that now because I've already got one almost finished here. And so I've just got a little bit of um, polyester filling here that I've been filling them with. So I've just used, and I'm just going to fill it with some polyester fill. And it, when you're doing using the polyester fill, always tease it out. Don't just grab a clump and then expect it to just go in like that. You need to tease it out, let the air get through it, and it's, you'll end up with a much fluffier, softer fill. Even if you're filling something fairly firmly, I still recommend that you tease it out before you put it in. It just seems to sit better because you don't want it all clumpy and lumpy. Now I'm not going to make this really firm, I'm just going to fill it just enough to hold the cushion because it is only for decoration this one and um, I have actually got some of these sort of cushions on my couch and they've been there for quite a few years I think now and they get pushed around and all sorts of things and they still look great, they just go on being great. So I've popped that in there now, I'm going to turn my raw edges in that quarter of an inch. Now you could pop a pin in there if you wanted to, but I'm just going to quickly uh, sew that along with a straight stitch on the sewing machine. It's not particularly attractive, but it's inside the cushion so you don't really see it. So you just have to squash this down a little bit. And start sewing just over where the sewing was already there before you turned it out. So just close to your folded edge. I would suggest if you've got a needle down position this is good because it just holds it while you move your hands. And you really just got to hold this down quite flat and just make sure those edges stay together and stitch them all the way along. As I said it may not be overly attractive but in general nobody will see this. And just do a little back stitch just to hold it. And I don't think that looks too bad. That's my cushion inner. So I'm going to quickly show you how to stuff that in now. It's a little bit of a pummeling exercise to get this inside your cushion because you've got to get that cushion insert all the way inside behind that first layer of the backing fabric. So I'm just going to open that out. It does require a little bit of squashing around and I'm going to grab my cushion and I'm going to squash it so I've got to make sure the corners end up in the corners. So we're doing a little bit of squishy squashing here. And don't worry too much about your cushion, it will smooth out again. So just try and get that in. Don't panic too much about those corners yet, once you've got it completely inside. So I start with the bottom, the hardest bit to get in first. And then I've just got to fiddle around a little bit to get those corners as much as possible into the corners. They will work them, their way there, but if you can help them in the first place, they get there quicker. Okay, so I think that's looking 
a little bit like I want it to look. And then, so this underneath piece of the backing, push that and smooth that out nicely as well. And then your top piece of the backing will just sit nicely over that. And so there's that cushion, that's the back, and that's the front. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, how good is that? You could have a, a delicious gift. I would love to receive a gift. I would lay two of those and a little, just a little tiny one on top. And I might tie them up with a very delicious piece of ribbon. And what better gift could you want to receive than something like that? And as I said, I've done some for children and they have just loved the, their cushions. There's really no limit to the things you could use them for. You could make little baby cushions, you can make little decorator item cushions, you can have them on your kitchen window seat if you've got one, almost anywhere you can think of. So I've just quickly show you, I've made a little applique cover here. I haven't made the inner for it yet. And this is just using some hand dyed fabrics that a friend of mine dyed. And I think that looks great. Another um, idea might be to use some of the pre-printed panels that you can get. Again, this is a child's one. It doesn't have to be, of course. Um, and I've just sewn this outside border on to one of the square pre-printed panels and then popped a cushion insert inside. Um, made All made the same way as the one I've shown you today. So just a few ideas for you on how to make a, a simple flanged cushion. And I just think that is just absolutely delicious.